Okay, so in this question, we have our spring attached to a spring string, which goes over a pulley, and we have a mass of 200 grams here. This is little m, this is mass big M, and radius r. Here we've got tension T, here we've got tension T dash. And let's let x equal distance from equilibrium. Well, let's write down all the force equations for this situation here. We've got an equation for the spring. In this case, the tension is going to cause the extension of the spring. So by Hooke's law, we have T is equal to Kx. Now, for the hanging mass, we've got Ma, the total force, which is M d squared x dt squared, is equal to, it's got gravity pulling it down, so the weight force, mg, and then it's got this tension force pulling it upwards. And then we've also got an equation for our pulley. So Newton's second law for torques, we've got that the torque is equal to R cross F, which is equal to I alpha. So we can write this, the distance from the point that it's pivoted about is just the radius. The force which is acting on it is the difference between these two tensions. So it's the T dash minus T. And that is equal to I, which is a half capital M, R squared alpha, which is d squared theta, dt squared. Now, x is the distance from equilibrium, and to relate x and theta, we have x is equal to r theta, because x is along the arc of this circle here. It's how much this string length, how much the height is changing, which is due to the spring, string moving over the pulley. Now, r is the radius, so it's not changing. So dx dt is equal to r d theta dt and d squared x dt squared is equal to r d squared theta dt squared. So we can rearrange this. We can replace this with 1 on r d squared x dt squared. And now this r, this r squared and this r are all going to cancel out. So we have t dash minus t is equal to a half capital M d squared x dt squared. Okay, so let's call this 1, let's call this 2, and let's call this 3. And let's sub 1 and 2 into 3. Okay, so t dash, that's equal to mg minus m d squared x dt squared. Minus, now t is equal to kx, so this is minus kx, and that's equal to a half. Now this is a capital M, d squared x, dt squared. So we can write d squared x, dt squared, outside of a half, capital M, plus little m, is equal to mg minus kx. So d squared x dt squared is equal to mg over a half capital M plus little m minus kx over a half capital M plus little m. Okay, now in normal simple harmonic motion, we have a is equal to minus omega squared x. So here's uh, x. So this is where omega in this case is equal to the square root of k on m. This is very similar to this. So let's just try and get it in exactly the same form. If we let x equal a sine omega t plus some constant, then we'll have d squared x dt squared 
is equal to minus a omega squared sine omega t. So this is omega squared minus omega squared a sine omega t. So that's x minus a constant. So this is equal to minus omega squared x minus plus omega squared constant. So this tells us that our constant, this term here, is equal to mg over 1 half big M plus little m. And here our omega squared is the k over our half big M little m. So that tells us that in this case, let's try and get some more room here, we've got omega is equal to the square root of k over a half, capital M plus little m. So that's what we were asked to find. We were asked to find omega. We could go ahead and find this constant if we wanted. Omega squared is k on a half m. times constant is equal to this thing. So our constant is equal to mg over k, which is really just the equilibrium conditions. Okay, but all we were asked to find was the angular frequency, and that's what we found here. Now in part b, we were asked to find the highest value. This is, m is fixed, k is fixed, this is 100 newtons, this is... 200 grams. So the only thing we're allowed to change is the capital M. So this is going to be biggest when the capital M is the smallest. So in that case, omega will equal K on M, which is the square root of 100 over M was 200 grams, so 0 0.2. So saving that on the solving that on the calculator, we end up with 22.4 radians per second. And then in part C, we were said what would happen if the radius, instead of being 2 centimetres, was 3 centimetres? Well, all the radial dependence dropped out. It dropped out in this step. So, um, no change as there is no radial dependence. Okay, so that one was quite a hard question.